next presentation, um, Professor Robert Herlich, um, he holds multiple degrees in mathematics and electrical engineering. And in 2000, he became a distinguished professor at the Graduate Center City University in New York. And Professor Herlich has made notable contributions in the field of spatial data analysis. Um, in other words, uh, Robert is one of the world's leading authorities on pattern recognition. And his papers, uh, published papers, have been cited over 60,000 times in Google Scholar. Uh, he's been retired, I believe, for about maybe 10 months or so. And um, he has spoken at multiple uh, energy science technology conferences in the past with a heavy focus on subtle energy research, which is uh, what he's going to be continuing and probably putting more time in into now that he uh, is retired. And his next presentation is Frequencies, Waters, and Experiments. So please help me welcome Professor uh, Robert Herlich. Thank you. Well, so you may be wondering what frequencies in water has to do with the kind of technologies that are presented and discussed by all of us who are, are here. So I'm going to give you a, a punchline that will follow through throughout the entire presentation. The punchline is that some frequencies are life beneficial, other frequencies are life detrimental. And you all know about 432. So that was the first hint when I read this paper. He's looking at octaves, and 432 is a characteristic frequency of water translated down to the audio range that we could hear. We could go further, of course. We could go to 27 and 13 and a half, whatever. All right, he ends the paper with this paragraph, which is very strange to have this statement made in an academic physics paper. He says, Viewing chemistry or biology as symphonic relationships between electrons and nuclei and not as localized pairwise interactions between molecules and ions may well be the mandatory quantum key towards a better comprehension of matter behavior under high density or concentration situations. He's telling the classical physics people, if you try to solve this, by interacting pairs of electrons, it will not work. And the paper actually goes back and gives an example of this to show them what happens when he does his analysis. Here's the chlorophyll. Uh, we have two kinds of chlorophyll here. In the blue is the free, chl free chlorophyll. But sometimes chlorophyll comes in and you're looking at it, and it's in some kind of a solvent. I don't know what this solvent is, but we have the graph. And so for the free chlorophyll, we have an absorption peak at 425 nanometers and 674 nanometers. Spread quite a bit apart. Put them in the solvent, the peaks change. The absorption peaks change as they get closer together. All four of these absorption peaks correspond to life beneficial. So those of you in music will immediately recognize the circle of fifths. It's the circle of fifths which actually form the basis for the Pythagorean tuning. If you go clockwise on here, whether it's in the minor key or the major key, if you go clockwise, each time you go from one sector to the next center, you're going up by a fifth. Going up by a fifth means your frequency is multiplied by one and a half. And this kind of protocol will be used for the experiments that might include weak quantum entanglement effects, which I think is actually correlated with the experiment or consciousness. But I don't have any um, empirical evidence or, or papers that have been published in this. So the meditation has different parts to it. One, you express appreciation to the creator. Why would this be in a scientific experiment? 
if the experimenter has negativity in their consciousness, negative emotions in their consciousness, that state of consciousness has the possibility, even without the intent of the experimenter, of altering the results. If you start out something with an expre uh, appreciation for the, to the creator, you're moving your conscious state into a more of a positive framework, which is where you want to be. This is the, what is called the circuit IC pad from infopathy.com. So you can see it's a spiral coil, and in the center it actually has a magnet, a small magnet. So you get both a DC and an AC effect. They also have something that's called a glowing IC pad, which is this one. And this one works much more effectively, much faster. It has in it uh, LEDs around the 405 or 430 nanometer. And the audio frequency modulates the LED lights. Electric field is a little bit different. Uh, those of you who work with crystals and want to clear an area where you're working with crystals, <clears throat> it would not be unusual to bring selenite into that area. And the selenite acts as a clearing. Um, but we also have some properties in Shungite, which in some sense, absorbs impurities. 